Uh, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, it, it really is an honor uh, to be here at the first hearing of the, of the Transportation Infrastructure Committee. Uh, I, I know he stepped out, but I have to mark, uh, you know, the, the, the chairmanship of, of uh, Mr. DeFazio and, the, and Mr. Gray's becoming ranking member. Really looking forward to working with, with both of you. Uh, and congratulations to the new and returning members of this committee. You are on an important committee for really, you know, critical issues for our country and for, for frontline workers that I'm proud to represent uh, as the president of the Transportation Trades Department of the AFL-CIO. Um, in fact, you know, more often than not, this committee has demonstrated to the American people that party affiliation in Washington can represent a, a wealth of good ideas and not just lines in the sand. Your willingness to work across those lines has been proven through the recent patches of the FAA reauthorization bill, water resources, and of course, surface transportation. And while these were all good pieces of legislation that the labor movement was proud to support, they are simply not enough. They are not enough to meet the demands of our transportation system today. They are not enough to meet the needs of our transportation system in 10 years. And they are nowhere near enough to what we need to leave a legacy of economic stability and world-class infrastructure for our children the way that our parents and grandparents did for us. You know, past generations, they did more than just build the interstate highway system, rail lines that connected New York to California and every state in between, and an aviation system that set the global standard. They also created the middle class by ensuring that those who built this country and contributed to this economy enjoyed the benefits of a strong union contract. Sadly, today, we are well past the point where we run the risk of letting these legacies crumble away. We know failure by the federal government to invest in infrastructure hurts working families. We know that it hurts our economy and leaves good union jobs on the table. And that's why today, I want to take you past GDP indicators, past the report card scores, and past the dizzying array of uh, numbers that any of us can point to, and instead briefly focus on the ways that failing to invest in infrastructure takes a toll on individuals. The people that I'm talking about are frontline transportation workers who want to build and operate a first-class system. They are Americans from all walks of life in all corners of our country who depend on safe and efficient transportation. I am talking about office workers who miss out on time with their families because they are stuck in hour-long commute to or from work. The family in Des Moines, Iowa, who cannot afford a car, lives in part of the community where bus lines don't run and must walk two miles just to get to the grocery store. Employers in South Carolina, employers who are desperate for better transportation option so that their employees can get to work. Truck drivers right here in the Port of Virginia who regularly lose out on pay because they are stuck, sometimes for hours on end, in traffic jams caused by outdated infrastructure that cannot keep up with demand. Air traffic controllers, FAA inspectors and technician, pilots, mechanics, flight attendants, transportation security agents in our aviation system that are forced to do more with less every day. The disadvantaged youth of Chicago and Minneapolis who want to work, who are qualified to work, but who have no way of getting to where the jobs are actually located. You know, we used to pride ourselves in being a nation that dug deeper built higher, and went faster. But now we are holding our economy and working fa families hostage by failing to fund our most important projects like Gateway in the Northeast, Sioux Locks in the Midwest, and jeopardizing still too often California high-speed rail. Let me be very clear. Our members stand ready, willing and able to drive the buses, build the roads, move freight, fly planes, and dare to dream big on projects like Gateway. The policy solutions, we've talked about them already, and they're not complicated. 
We need to stabilize the highway trust fund. That includes looking at a gas tax and VMT. We must return the harbor maintenance trust fund to its intended purposes. And federal infrastructure investments must be paired with strong labor policies and Buy America rules so that taxpayer dollars will be used to create good middle class jobs that we can be proud of. Finally, if we want to improve transportation infrastructure in this country, we have got to stop shutting down the federal government. It is embarrassing, it is counterproductive, and it is the political equivalent of shooting yourself in the foot and then wondering why you are bleeding. By showing the courage that this crisis, our infrastructure crisis, deserves, we can leave behind a legacy better than crumbling roads, bridges, and struggling transit systems, better than congested ports and airports. Working families are ready. It is now your turn to show America that you are ready to meet this challenge head on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Willis.